Rub up your engines! People are always asking me, to turbo or not to turbo? That is the question. Well, I'm going to give you an answer showing this Honda Touring Accord that is turbocharged, but it's a special kind of turbocharging. 2.0 liter Honda four-cylinder engine with a turbocharger. Realize, Honda has been turbocharging cars for a long time. It was first in their Acuros in a 2.3 liter engine, and they understand turbos, but strangely enough, they don't make the turbocharger in this thing. They buy them from Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi makes them, and Mitsubishi makes them in Indiana. They make them in the United States. Honda knows where to get the right stuff from. And even more interestingly, this is just a simple turbo. It's not one of those dual setups. It's one stage, it's not two stage. Honda went a different way than everyone else. Instead of making more and more expensive, complex, and more lively to break down turbos with all these new innovations. They use a simple design and they have variable intake that Honda engineers design. Now an intake just sits there and sucks the air and it's variable so you don't get much turbo leg but since it's just sitting there it opens and closes a little but not spinning like a turbo it can last forever. The fancier they are the more they cost and the faster they break down. They went for reliability which is Honda's name. That's how they sell these cars. They're reliable. Then people say oh they have oil dilution problems. This guy was smart. He can get the 1.5 that has oil dilution problems. He got the 2.0 they have no oil dilution problems. And I kind of agree with Honda's engineering here. Of course, a lot of the cars have 1.5s, they're cheaper to make, they get a little bit better gas mileage. The bigger the engine, the more it can handle turbocharging. I just live in fear when somebody brings me a one liter, three cylinder car with a turbo on it, thinking, okay, 50, 60,000 maybe, then something's gonna blow up. These don't have problems. When Honda started putting them in the Acuras, I never saw a single one break down. Now the owner's telling me, the gas Gas tank is too small as far as he's concerned. He said the best he gets is 20. It's rated at 24, but he gets 20. Part of that is because it's a turbo, and part of it is because a lot of the gas mileage ratings are just pure and simple lies. Realize in the United States, they only test a very small percentage of cars for gas mileage in Michigan. They don't have the facilities to test them. They go by what the manufacturers tell them. So this is rated at 24, the best he ever got was 20. I've been in Lexuses that were rated at 32, and I got 22 in them. Doesn't matter if it was eco mode, he gets 20 in eco mode. I drove the Lexus, had it in eco mode, drove the San Antonio. Antonio Houston and back, got like 20 miles a gallon. It doesn't matter. They're bigger engines, the turbos have a lot of power, but don't think you're gonna get great gas mods in one of these things because they're fast. But at the same time, don't worry about oil dilution problems. These engines don't have oil dilution problems. And since Honda's the number one maker of internal combustion engines in the world, I'm assuming these things are gonna last quite some time. He's had it for three years now, and he doesn't have a lick of problems with the thing, other than the tires, low profile tires. You can watch my video on why I think they're stupid. Well, he agrees. He loves the look, but he's popped five tires so far, and he said the tires are useless in the snow. And this is Rhode Island. It does snow here in the winter. If you really wanted to drive like a maniac in the winter, you'd really have to put some snow tires on it. Now, the owner's 20 years old, and he admits that he loves the lane departure. He said it saved him a bunch of times when he was screwing around and didn't notice, <laughs> and boom, it jerked him back away from it. If you're not like old Scotty and really know how to drive a car and pay attention, you might find these systems are just what you need. It's a four-door sedan. Everyone wants SUVs. Me? I'd really have a sedan. It's more fun to drive. There's a lot of room in the back seat. It's not just tiny little kids can fit in those things, but it drives more like a sports car. They don't sell all that many of these because people aren't into sedans anymore. If you can find a good used one, jump on it. He bought it brand new and he's happy with it. He's having no problems at all. I really, these are really cushy seats. They're very comfortable. They remind me of BMWs. They're very comfortable seats. He was complaining though that the leather in his friend's Jaguar was a lot smoother than his, but he did have a problem with the gas. They fixed it, it's supposed to be electric. And it's got one of those capless systems, which I abhor. But then again, it's built by Honda. Unlike the ones that Ford made that the metal corroded and they wouldn't work right. This thing's made out of plastic. There's one thing about plastic. It doesn't corrode. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's got adaptive suspension in the yeah. back. This thing rarely rides like a dream. Honda's a good engineering company. A lot of people are scared away by the turbo stuff, but shouldn't be in this. Now, 1.5 liter? Yeah, that's another story. I'd be afraid of that too. But these two liters, I've never seen any problems. One of the best engines they make. Think of Honda. What did they do when they built their ultimate sports car, the S2000? Guess what? They put a two liter engine in the thing. So let's take it for a ride. Happy entry music. No, it's a Honda, so you know it's going to start. Starts right up. And this has the crazy push button stuff. You know it's going to work. But look at the panorama backup camera. This isn't gas you're getting close. It's got everything on it. You can make it small, you can make it big. You can do whatever you want with the thing. Look at that. It's insane. As you said, he's not lying. He's getting 20 miles a gallon driving the thing around. Favorites is the head-up display right in front of your head. Okay? Where are you looking? When I'm driving, I'm looking ahead. What I really hated about the Tesla was when you wanted to see stuff, you had to look way over here. That's distracting. In front, that's what you want. Let's do the bump test. Here we go on the bumpy Rhode Island road. All right, not bad for this horrendous road. Rides a lot better than the Tesla did. This is a very bumpy road, realize that. Well, let's see what this turbo engine can do. It's winding up. Whoa. Not bad for a sedan. So it's got plenty of get up and go, but it really handles well. It really is a sports sedan. Honda's into suspension systems too. Like I said, it's got variable suspension in the back. It's a very fun sedan to drive around. Now, the owner might only be 20 years old, but he's wise beyond his age. And he did all kinds of amortization of depreciation. Oh, he liked driving around in the Audis all right, but rather than lose all his money, he decided this was a very wise financial decision. There's hope for the future. Of course, it's got all the tech. It's got the wireless charger, navigation, everything you could possibly want. There's so many different things. He went out of the car, so the remote's gone. It even tells you that. It's a marvel of technology, but it's Honda technology. Honda technology generally holds up. And yeah, problems with the 1.5 liter turbos. I have no disagreements with that. But this is a 2 liter turbo. They don't have problems with anything. They're really solid built engines. I think it's probably, like I said, 2 liters is one of the best engines Honda ever made. And they can take it. This engine can take it. And the turbo on it is some fancy dual blah blah. No, it's a single scroll. But it's got a fancy intake system that Honda designed. They have excellent engineers and I think they really outdid themselves on this particular sedan. Damn, the Touring. Now it's a beautiful car. There's no arguing that. And when you consider Honda's technology, personally wouldn't have any worries about this two liter turbo. Interesting design. He hasn't had a lick of problems with it other than the low profile tires, which I can't stand. And he can't either. He says they really look cool, but they're always popping in the potholes of Rhode Island. So now you know a little bit more about turbocharged cars, especially this Honda Touring with a two liter turbo. That's a simple single scroll with the technology and the intake, so rather than having the moving parts being complex, the non-moving parts are more complex, which I'm going to break down. Sure, maybe you're going to have to change a gate, but it's going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a turbocharger. And since these are Hondas, I have personally yet to see a Honda turbocharger break. Though they are Mitsubishi turbochargers, like I said, made in the United States. So the world spins around, and Honda seems to be doing a pretty good job keeping up with the rotation. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Dodge Man 702 says, I got a 99 Dodge Ram that says no bus. My gauge cutter lose power. The needles drop. It won't start up. I wait a few minutes to start up again. What does this mean? No bus means you got a problem either the computer or the wiring between the computer and the sensors. The bus lines are like your backbone with your nerve system going from your brain throughout your body. And when you get no bus, that means it's lost communication somewhere and it's a problem in that system. Unfortunately, it can be any of the computer modules, the wiring, or the main computer itself. You know you've got an electronic problem. Now, unfortunately for you, you said you wait a few minutes to start up and runs. It could easily be the computer itself going out. Because let's say you got an electrical short. Generally, the electrical short's going to stay there and be there the whole time. Shutting the car off and turning it on does not fix an electrical short. But a computer failure yes it reboots itself and then later it can come on so the first thing I'd have checked if I were you would be the main computer so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell